Hello beautiful people, this is Marcus Demmel, a warm warm welcome to Guitar Junkie. Today i like to tell you about my five basic rules that I always use before I start to record a guitar tone. So let me play for about two minutes and then we get into the matter. Peace. <laughs> So in my humble opinion, the most important part of your tone, your sound, is the source. And that is you and your guitar. So if you cannot play a part, or you're struggling with it, or your technique is suffering, there is no gadget amplifier effect or whatever that will catch up. So let's assume you have your tone in your fingers and then the next logical step is the guitar um, i'm always in shock when i do clinics um, about all the wonderful instruments that are set up terribly so always make sure your intonation and your tuning and your frets are proper make sure that your pickup height is okay and that you feel comfortable with the instrument make sure that there's no buzzing these might be really obvious things, but they are often overlooked. The amplifier is probably the most important thing right next to the artist or the guitar. So, I always try to get a good dry guitar sound, meaning with no reverb delay or whatsoever. Just usually straight into the amp or your overdrive pedal whatever you have to use to get that basic sound, but it's always bone dry. So why do I have so many amplifiers? Well, I just try to find the right amp for the right song, meaning I don't want to use any EQ or whatsoever. So I'm trying to fit into a sonic landscape. You can use either a frequency analyzer or your ears. Get the dry amp, yeah! Next up, of course, is the speaker cabinet. It's speakers and the microphone or the microphones 
depending how you want to mic it. I always do use this one cabinet. I have many, many more, but I just found this uh, purple Marshall cabinet, which is not super old. It's from the 90s, but it's equipped with the Vintage 30s, uh, made in England, and I always mic it with just one tall microphone. The black markers on the right speaker are for SM57s that I use sometimes if I want more bite but usually I just use one tile mic even though you see two. Now of course this is a personal preference there are people who are going crazy with miking I just like this method and I always keep this one cabinet mic'd up and change the amplifier in the control room and that's it from the microphone, of course, we have to travel some to some kind of uh, mic preamp. In this case, you see, it's called an Arrow preamp, which was custom made for me. It's a copy of a Taylor Funken V76. It's a tube mic preamp. I also have a an vintage API down here, the black ugly thing with the white stripe. And uh, then uh, we go to the time-based effects. Here's my reverb unit. It's an Ensonic or plate reverb. Uh, here's a TC Electronics that stopped working yesterday. <laughs> and uh, upstairs you see a Yamaha UD stump, which is the Holdsworth delay, which is also great. Here's my newest find. It's the Ibanez DM1000, which I bought for about 80 bucks on eBay, I have to say. It sounds fantastic. It's probably the best sounding delay that I do own. 80 euro. Fantastic. So, I always, as I mentioned before, use these effects after the fact. Meaning, I already have the sound. Of course, I can listen to them while I record if I need some inspiration. But, I don't print them. So, one last effect that I started using recently is parallel compression. So here's a copy, is a fairly inexpensive copy of the famous LA-2A made by Teletronics. This one is made by Clark. And what I do, I, um, I use the auxiliary on the board and uh, fade in a little bit of compression. You basically don't hear it, but it's it gives you sort of a, I don't know, a doubling effect without time delay. I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it, I just learned this little trick and I've been using it very gently in most of my guitar tracks. The last point of your guitar sound of course is the mixing, the EQing and at the end even the mastering makes a big difference on your guitar sound. So, the true sad fact is that if you have an engineer that doesn't like your guitar sound or thinks that the drums are the most important thing and that the um, vocals need to be 12 dB louder than anything else, your guitar is going to sound small. So there's nothing you can do about it except mix your own records or have a trustworthy engineer. But a basic rule is you don't want too much EQ on the guitar. Maybe as an effect, but not to have a great sound source. This was Marcus Demo. I hope you've learned something. I truly enjoyed making this little video. I try to make more. Catch me. Peace.